Hey, welcome back. It's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Challen from Mr. Excel. Mike Gerben from Excel is fun. I'll be joining us. This is episode 83, Look Up and Summarize. Wow, this is a doozy today, Mike. Uh, we have someone who's getting a file every single day. It has a list of all of the students who are failing a class. We have last name, first name, the name of the course, uh, teacher, and some other things like that. Now, uh, these headings up here, including the merged record in A2, that's completely evil. I don't like that at all. And uh, the person is trying to create this report. So, uh, all of the last name, first name, and then uh, check this out. Like to figure out the math column, you have to search for geometry or math or uh, calculus or algebra. Uh, painful. And the problem that we have is okay, first of all, we can't change failing kids. It's coming in the way that it's coming in, right? Some guy in IT creates that and we're just stuck with it. Um, and he also wants to collapse this down to a single line. All right, so, you know, this is a tough one. I initially thought of a macro, um, but I'm going to try something crazy. I'm going to try a um, power pivot. Let's see if power pivot can solve this. I like power pivot, especially uh, um, because it might provide a way to save that failing kids out to the hard drive every day open power pivot refresh the data and have the report just update uh, first thing I did is I took the unique list of courses and created a lookup table rather than have that formula this seemed like the the way to go I mean hey you only offer new courses once a year so you don't have to update this table once a year let's create this table and use that we're going to go over to power pivot uh, power pivot window and rather than paste data in or link data in I'm going to pretend like Excel is a foreign system and say that it's uh, you know, one of these others pull data in from an Excel file. Click next. Uh, where is that file? Oh, I saved it out in CAA failing kids. There it is. Although I have to tell you, I got rid of that row one and row two. We're going to have to do that every day uh, before we open this. Um, preview and filter. There's a lot of columns there I really don't need. I do need last name, first name. Probably don't need grade. I do need course. Course. Don't need a lot of, so I'm going to check everything. I am going to leave one numeric column there. Uh, that would be the grade in the course. Even though they didn't want to show that, I just want something pivotable that I can report. So I'll uncheck all of this and click OK. Click Finish. Uh, success, 461 rows. Good. We can now add a new column in Power Pivot. Equal first name, ampersand, quote space quote, ampersand last name. And we'll rename that just to be name. All right, so this is good. Power Pivot is learning that this is one of the rules. Every time we import, they're going to add that column in automatically. Beautiful, right? Back to Excel. Here's my lookup table. I want to create under Power Pivot a linked table from this. Click OK. So there's my course. There's my maps to. And we're going to define a link from course here to course on the other sheet. This is one of the really powerful things about Power Pivot. So from failing kids course to table one course, click create. All right, pivot table, new worksheet. OK, what are we going to do? We're going to have the last name going down the left hand side. So we'll put that in row labels. We're going to have the percentage in the sum values area and finally the maps to going across the top. All right, and what you'll see is I now have a report that looks almost like what we want it to look like except for we have these numbers instead of X's. If we really want the X's there then I'm going to go in I'm going to format this just like I would a regular pivot table field settings where you use a custom number format and a custom number format is going to say if it's positive I want an X in quotes. If it's negative, I want nothing. If it's zero, I want nothing. Click OK. Click OK. And we now have that uh, report. Names down the left hand side, each name only once. Uh, the X's, so if someone is failing two classes, like uh, the fictional Alan Haynes, uh, it's going to show up with both X's. Uh, that's it. Mike, I'm sure you're going to come up with some formula that's going to make my head spin, but uh, that's how I would do it. Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. I love the power pivot, especially the way it was connected to that file. So every time you drop a new file down there, you could just up, uh, update the power pivot. 
Uh, I'm just going to, um, actually, I want to take a look here. Uh, what the person who sent this in did, they were trying to do approximate uh, match, right? Looking for the word geometry, math, calc in this math category, creating this wild formula to put these x's. Now, a stroke of genius that Mr. Excel had is he said, forget that approximate. If you're getting this file every single day, then the classes are more or less set. So why not just set up here and add an extra column with the category? And then you can either use Power Pivot to connect the tables, or I'm going to use VLOOKUP. So the way I'm going to solve this, not, you're not going to use some wild formula to extract a unique list. I'm just going to add two extra columns to this data set, one that combines the names, just like Mr. Excel did, and one to do a VLOOKUP based on this to give me my category. And then it's a simple pivot table. So I'm going to insert, right click the A and the B, and insert. All right. And then I'm going to call this name. name. And this one will be category, whether it's math or English category. or whatever. I'm going to highlight that and do the format painter. All right, now, same formula as Mr. Excel. We're going to say, hey, give me the first name. Now, that's one thing in the formula. I'm going to use Shift 7, which is ampersand. That's going to join a second thing, which is a space in double quotes, a second ampersand, and I'm going to grab the third thing. Seven, Howard. All right, now I have that. Now I'm going to do my VLOOKUP based on this class over here, so equals VLOOKUP. In essence, I'm going to look up all these names, and so we'll have a category not of the specific class name, but of the category. I'm going to come over here. Now I'm going to click a table array here. Now I've inserted this. Since this would be a daily process, you'd have to you know, put this in there. If it's in a different workbook, just open it and click on the workbook. And then you can highlight the table and do a workbook reference. I'm going to highlight not the labels at the top, but just the first couple of records. Control, Shift, Down Arrow. F4 to lock it. Now up here, you can see it has the sheet reference name and the uh, cell references locked. Now I'm going to type a comma here. If I were to click back on that other sheet doing a sheet reference, it would change the sheet reference. So I'm going to work up here. Column index is just two, comma, and then we can do exact match for uh, we're looking up words. All right, Control English. Enter. Now I have my two formulas. I'm going to highlight. Well, so there's one formula. Here's another formula, right? So two completely different formulas. I can go ahead and highlight both of them. And st since there's stuff to the right, I can just double click and send it down. Now I'm going to control down arrow just to check out. And there we go. Now we can just do a simple uh, pivot table. Now there are some, I don't want to just do a single cell and not pay attention. I don't want this up here. So I'm actually going to highlight this. And I actually only need to letter grade. I'm going to control shift down arrow. Now I have my data set. Go up to insert pivot table, pivot table. New workbook worksheet, click OK. Now, all right, I'm going to drag name to ro row. Let's see if I can do this. OK. And category to column. So then there I have it looks just like the one Mr. Excel did after he did his pivot, uh, power pivot. And I'm going to drag letter grade. Now, this is a letter, a text. Usually, we're dragging numbers to the values. But when you drag any text, it'll count by default. All right, so that's the basic setup. And then you can do exactly, still lots of Mr. Excel's trick here. I'm going to uh, right click and go down to Value Field Settings. I'm going to click on Number Format and go to Custom. Now, I'm going to uh, just put an X in parentheses, because I don't think there will ever be any negative numbers. Uh, so that will work just fine. An X, click OK. Click OK. And now we see all those X's. Maybe I want to adjust the report look here. So report, I'm going to say show in tabular. And then grand totals, how about off for rows and columns. And there I have my unique list of names with X's in all the categories for which type of classes they have failed. All right, send it back to Mr. Excel. I thought you were going to get the point for some wild formula, but instead you get the point for knowing that when you create the custom number format, that uh, blank cells are going to not get the format at all. When you put that X in there without any semicolons, it's like, oh, you're going to get an X everywhere. But of course not. There's no value. You get nothing. Uh, that's great. That's why I love these dueling Excel podcasts. I learned things every week, and I hope everyone else did too. I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another netcast from Mr. Excel, and Excel is fun.